my first reading vlog. Yas! Welcome back to my channel guys. I'm Zach with Zach's Books and today I'm going to be doing my physical read of The Dark Tower Book 7, The Dark Tower. I started my journey on The Dark Tower in February of 2020 and so far it's been a really fun trip and a really fun journey and I'm excited to conclude it. So I don't typically read outside but with the weather being pretty nice out I figured I'd come out here and read outside. So let's get started. Page 292. It started off really good, pretty fast into some action, um, but it's kind of slowed down a little bit. I'm listening to it on Libby and also doing it by physical read as well. And I gotta say, it's kind of slowed down the past 40 50 pages, like chapter 8 that I'm on in uh, part 2. It's kind of slowed down a little bit for me. Um, I think they're listening to some audio tapes from a guy named Ted. Um, and it's just kind of, it's slowed down a little bit. But, you know, it, it's been pretty good so far. Book mail! You gotta open it! Yes! Yes! We got The Dark Tower 2, The Drawing of the Three. The original hardcover. Woo woo! <sighs> Looks so pretty. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Woo woo! Now we just need wasteland.
that's upsetting. All right, so update. I'm on page 404, and I'm upset with something that happened. Obviously, I'm not going to give spoilers away, but if you read the book, you know what I'm referencing. It's upsetting. Not happy. But I still got about half the book to go, so we'll see if it can make up for it. You'll see the red dot. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. So I decided to take a break after yesterday's read um, with all the stuff that happened. Um, just kind of rethink about what I read, what happened, and how I feel about it. Um, so I picked it back up this morning, and I'm on 485, and lo and behold, another thing happened that I'm not too happy about. Um, I'm not as upset about it as I was the other one. Um, I'm trying not to spoil anything for you guys, but it's getting hard to. Um, let's just say the quartet is pretty much broken at this point. Um, uh, Susanna kind of went on her own. Jake and Roland went to go and do, um, uh, they traveled to help Stephen King. Um, because in Song of Susanna, like I said, they, like, kind of have Stephen King, like, involved with the book, which I thought was kind of weird. Um, so in this one, they travel back to try and stop his accident that happened in 1999. Um, and so they get there, and they stop him from dying, and he gets an accident, he gets, you know, he's, he's hurt, you know, like in real life with what happened. Um, unfortunately something happens to someone else and if you read the book you know who I'm talking about but if you haven't I'm really trying not to spoil anything for you guys until I do my full Dark Tower run through and explain everything that kind of happens with it um, not as sad as the, the other one but not as it, it's upsetting still I mean I've had really high hopes for this book and as of right now it's just been kind of shooting me down and kind of been a little Debbie Downer. But uh, I'm hoping the rest of it's going to pick back up and I'll be able to end the series on a high note. But we'll see. It's relatively early still. Um, so I'm planning to kind of binge read the rest of this tonight. And I'll give you full update on what happens. Hopefully with no spoilers for people who want to read the series. Um, and who are kind of hesitant to. I don't want to spoil anything for you. Um, but yeah, hopefully I can get this wrapped up tonight. And my first journey across the beam will be done. Alright guys, so I finished it. It was a long night. And I'm going to show you my thoughts. After I last talked to you, something upsetting had happened. Um, Susanna, Roland, and Oi set out on their journey to go to the tower and see the Crimson King and so they go on their journey and on their journey Susanna goes into a dream state and sees Eddie and Jake and they both warn her of Dandelo um, which she's not sure what that is who it is and she kind of sees them in like uh, New York during like a winter season and and then she wakes up and then they continue on their journey and then they stumble across this road that brings them to the tower or a town and they go into the town and they meet this guy named Joe um, and they meet up with this guy named Joe Collins who is in this cabin and so they stay there for a little bit and they talk to him uh, all while Mordred, um, the spider son that Roland and uh, I can't think of her name, but it's somebody who was inside of Susanna, like another like personality spirit type thing. And so he's on their tail and so they stop in this town to talk to Joe Collins and he ends up being a bad guy and... Um, Susanna is able to figure out that this thing, this person, is Dandelo. So what he's doing is he used to do like stand-up comedy, but he said he stopped. And so Rowan and Susanna and Oi tell him to kind of show him their, his best work. 
And so he does, and then Susanna ends up slapping something on her face that was kind of growing there, and so she needs to, um, she goes to use the washroom, and meanwhile, Roland keeps hearing these jokes, and he's just, he's dying. And Susanna ends up finding out that he is actually dying. Um, after she finds out that he's Dandelo, he, she goes back out to stop him, and then they end up fighting him off and they actually kill him and then they continue back on the journey and then Mordred comes around and you know kinda sucks his blood he eats him um, so then they continue on with the rest of their journey and they find this guy named Patrick who is living in this guy's basement and so he's got no tongue so he's a mute he can't talk he can hear you but he can't talk and what this guy does is he's got a special ability to where when he draws something he can bring it into reality or if he erases something he can erase it out of reality um Susanna then has another dream with Eddie and Jake and it's kind of telling her the same thing like hey you're gonna need to leave soon the rest of this journey needs to be taken by Roland and you gotta you know, your time is coming and time is almost up. And so one of the nights that they're camping out, she sees Patrick just kind of doodling some stuff. And she has a dream about a door, the lost door from the drawing of the three. Um, and so she goes and tells Patrick, draw this door. And then Rowan wakes up. And it's kind of asking her what's going on, and she's just like, just let him draw. And so he draws the door, and Susanna then is telling Rowan that this is my time, I have to go. you got to finish the journey alone. And Roland is like pleading for her to stay, because the rest of the quartet's been broken up. So then Patrick draws the door for Susanna. She... Pretty much has kind of given Oi an option. Do you want to stay with Roland or do you want to come with me? And Oi ends up staying with Roland. Susanna leaves. So Susanna's now gone. So it's just Oi, Patrick, and Roland left. So the quartet is now officially all broken up. So then Roland has to pretty much trust in Patrick to kind of keep an eye out on him. They keep going. He gets really tired and he senses Mordred is nearby and so when he lays down he kind of tells Patrick you know keep an eye on this star draw it don't fall asleep and Mordred kind of sings him like a psychic like lullaby thing and Patrick then falls asleep spoiler alert while Roland is asleep Oi is before that happened, uh, Roland kind of like yelled at Oi. Oi wasn't really happy, so he kind of was like giving him the cold shoulder. Um, and then Roland falls asleep and he hears a noise. He's not sure what it is. And then he hears a whelp. And so he wakes up and looks over, and Oi is attacking Mordred while Mordred is attacking Oi. And they're kind of intertangled with each other, and this is a very upsetting part in the book. Um, Mordred, pretty much, he, he kills Oi. He, like, bites into his neck, and he throws him into a tree that Roland had broken a branch off, and he just you know, gets impaled. Um, so Oi's now dead. Susanna left him. Eddie got shot earlier in the book and right through his head and Jake while trying to save Stephen King from the accident ends up getting impaled between a truck and a like a rock I think it is but he gets hit by a, a truck and so now three of his content are dead and Susanna leaves him so now he's left with just Patrick the guy who can just draw and erase whatever so it's been pretty upsetting up to this point, and I want to say Oi's was probably the worst. Um, when I was reading this earlier with my wife, she could see that I was fairly upset about this because I kind of like set the book down and I was like, oh my god, what the hell. So after that, Rowan continues on 
and gets to the tower where the Crimson King is pretty much, you know, telling him, like, hey, you, you know, you're not going to be able to get up here. And he's hurling um, some form of, like, slug at him. Um, I, they had a specific name, but I can't remember what it is. And so Rowan kind of gets behind Patrick and is kind of shooting at the slugs while he's telling Patrick to draw the Crimson King and then erase him. So he's erasing him and he gets down to just the eyes and then the eraser runs out. And so it's just a set of eyes now. Rowan continues on towards the tower after the Crimson King has been pretty much erased. And he tells Patrick to pretty much kind of go on his own way. Head back the way we came and you'll get cans and you'll stumble across that village and you'll be fine. So Patrick leaves and before Rowan enters we kind of go to like an epilogue thing with Susanna. She ends up in New York in 1987 and she runs into Eddie and in this time she he is alive. And Eddie was told by like voices and like his sleep to go to New York um, around Christmas time to meet up with somebody named Susanna. But Susanna, who's been alive throughout the whole entire thing, knows everything about Eddie and everything about Jake. While Eddie doesn't really know Susanna, eventually meet up. And then Eddie's like, you should meet my kid brother. Susanna's like, no, I don't think we need to. And then Eddie like yells, Jake. And then you're like, oh, Jake's back too. So Eddie and Jake are back. Susanna meets up with them. And then Stephen King like writes like a disclaimer saying, if you want the book to end on a happy note, stop reading now. Oi, if you believe Oi is to come back into the picture with the, this group of three, then so be it. Make the book what you want it to be, to be like this happy ending. Stop reading now. If you wish to continue and see Roland's journey into the tower, continue on. And I was like, well, okay, it's a little weird. Um, so I continued on, of course, because I got to finish the book. And so Rowan's climbing the tower. Every 19 steps is a new floor. If you've read the series, 19 and 99 are like big numbers for throughout the series. So he continues on. Each each like level is like a moment from his life. And so he gets to the top and there's a gun and I think a rose sitting on like the door handle. He goes in and he's trying to remember why he's this all looks familiar to him, whether he's seen it in dreams or or what. But he keeps wondering why he's seen this all before. And then the man in black talks to him and is like, this time can be different. It doesn't have to be the same way. You don't have to come back to this tower this time. And essentially he gets like pulled into the doorway and he ends up back on a desert on a beach the beach that started the whole series and then the line comes back in that the man in black fled across the desert and the gunslinger followed which is the very first line in the very first book and ultimately that means he got reset as soon as i was done with this i wanted to reread the whole series again that is just how good the series was this book alone, I would say, ranks probably fourth in my favorites. Uh, reason why it's not third is just because of all the bad things that happen. I know it kind of had like a semi-happy-ish ending um, with Eddie, Susanna, and Jake, but I just was too upset with Oi not being brought back yet to rank it any higher. And the other three that are above this are just really good. Um, but yeah. I mean, I'll eventually have a video kind of ranking all of the Dark Tower books, um, kind of talking about what I can remember about them. The Gunslinger I read all the way back in February, so I'll try and remember that one as best as I can. Um, I eventually will be doing a reread of the series continuously, starting with Gunslinger and going in chronological order not written order but I do have a bunch of other books I got to read first but overall I would give the whole series probably four stars 
it's just those middle two books, Wizard and Glass, I went through the keyhole that kind of set the series back for me. I, th I just felt like they took away from the main storyline. But when I do the reread, maybe I'll change my mind. I know there's a few people who read the series and the first time they just really hated those stories and then when they did the reread, they were like, okay, it kind of makes sense. There's someone else who just didn't like them at all. But yeah, that was the end to my journey on the Dark Tower for the first time. That was, it was very fun. I loved it. All right, guys. So that was my reading vlog of the Dark Tower Book 7. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments down below. Otherwise, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. And long days and pleasant nights. Have a good day.